Hey, what's going on guys? In this video for Batch Leads, I'm gonna show you how to import addresses into the system, be able to create a list and where you put the tags. So let's get into it. So I, like I said, we got a fresh account here. So I got some fresh lists that I'll be importing into this system for you. Now there's two ways to import lists um, or I mean, two, two ways to import properties. Um, the first way is to do it by an individual property. Let's say you don't have a list. You just have one property they want to put in the system. What you do is you come here to filters and then you just see this button right here that says add property address. And then there you go. From here, once we have lists, you'll be able to select a list, put in the drop down box. Of course, just fill out all the information, just name, mailing address, property address, email, one, two, and then up to five phone numbers. And of course you can put notes here, any type of notes, or if this is a property you want to be opted out and put in the opt out list. So you'll be able to have a opt out list. It's different from your do not call. The do not call is where it'll automatically put the properties in the do not call. But if you ever do texting within this platform, and let's say that number happens to be on a list you're marking to, it'll automatically skip over that list. Now opt out, is people who have asked to be opted out of your list. Now, depending on your market and how you want to do marketing, I'm not telling you how you should do your marketing, but there's certain people that may be asked to either, oh, I'm not interested in this time, or do you know what? I'm never going to sell. Well, they might sell at some point. So what you can do is just opt them out. They'll be put in an opt-out file or kind of an opt-out list that you'll be able to actually see. So that's say 12 months from now, your opt-out piles up, well, you can put that opt-out list back into another marketing list and try them again maybe a year later from a different angle. Maybe you did texting and a year later you want to do RVM or cold calling or whatever. But just showing that if there's a specific property you wanted to be filtered out of your list into the opt-out list, you just then click this little button right here. Now, the second way is the bulk way. Of course, you come to import. And then we just have to drop a file there. So we got New York, my NOD list. This list was pulled on 310. And it's pretty smart. It'll automatically kind of filter or, I mean, match to what you have on that list, especially if a header. So, of course, we got first name, last name, uh, validated mailing address, property address. So for this one, because on my header in my Excel spreadsheet, it says validated mailing address, but on here it just says mailing address. So I need to go ahead and match that. Got mailing city, mailing state, mailing zip code. I know what you're asking is, well, what's the difference if you got that data skip traced? And like I said, Batch Lead Stacker has a great skip tracing tool as well. They also have a separate one called Batch Skip Tracing, which I highly recommend. We'll have the link below as well if you wanna go check that out. Um, but way how when you skip traces, it will come back with the mailing address in original and then also validated mailing address. The validated mailing address is, is if you have an awesome platform like Batch Lead Stacker, where after you skip trace it, it is actually connected to the USPS and it'll actually validate the mailing address that you had in the original raw data that you upload against skip trace and it will run it against the USPS um, database to just pretty much validate to make sure that is the real mailing address of that person, right? That is connected to that property address. So back to this. So we got everything filled out, first name, last name, mailing address, property, and then phone one, two, and three. So it looks good to me. Kind of move my head out of the way. Then you just hit next. And of course, if you had custom fields, um, you know, I took the emails out. We don't really do any type of email campaigns or anything like that. Um, but again, with this list, I think we just had the phone numbers. So of course here, if the next step is if you already have a list in here, you would see that in this dropdown, but we don't. So I'm gonna create a new list right here. I'm just gonna put NOD and then tag, select a tag. If you have tags already built, you'd have them right here, or you can create a new tag. Um, now, one thing to be aware of is when you're importing your list, you can only attach one tag. Um, don't really like that. I kind of hope batch leads, if batch leads, if you're listening to this, hopefully you guys allow us to create multiple tags when importing, um, just cause like, I'd like to add a few, but you can only add one tag when importing. So to be able to add more tags is you have to go through the importing process, then go back and filter 
find this list and then just add more tags to it. But again, if you're good with your list and your data, um, you probably won't really need much tags. So for the tags, the first tag, I always put the dates. I always wanna know the dates of the list or the properties when I skip trace them or pull them because based off what you're doing, like NOD, you should be pulling that list every single week, right? And then for liens, I usually pull liens every few months, absentees, maybe every six months, vacants, batch lead stacker will actually scrub and tell you the new vacants every single month, which is pretty awesome. Um, but again, if you need to find more data, we do probably vacants once a month. So everybody has that specific timeline of when you pull the new data from whether data provider you have like prop stream that we use. So of course I like to give it a name. So that way, I can come in here and just filter like, oh, NOD, and then what was the last date? And I can see my tags and be like, oh, the last date I pulled NODs was two, you know, two weeks ago. I'm a week behind, so it's time for me to go pull my NODs. And with the lanes, let's say if I filter, go to my filtering, and I filter my list of lanes, and then I see the last tag date was like four months ago, then I would know, hey, it's time for me to pull a new liens list. But as a recommendation, if you know your timelines of when to pull new niche lists to get the updated ones, I would highly recommend using the calendar and setting those notifications so you're notified on the dates. So that way you have a system just going over it. So for tag name, I'm going to put NOD and then pulled, um, let's see here. I believe it was 310, correct. NOD pulled 310. Now don't just put the date. Um, definitely put, again, the list name pulled and there are, you can just even put NOD and the date. The reason why you don't just wanna put the date is just in case a property overlaps on a two list. So for an example, let's say I am importing this list and I just put 310 and it's for the NODs. Now let's say after this list, I import, or let's say a month later, I then import an absentee list and I just put the date um, 410, 410. So my NOD list was 310, my absentee list was 310. But let's say there's a few properties on this uh, NOD list that were also on the absentee list. Well, when I'm filtering and I filter by dates, well, if I just picked 310, it will show me um, any type of list or in private that have that tag. So let's say today I upload a vacant list 310. Well, now I got a tag with 310 and vacants 310. Now you can go list and then tag. But again, the point of the tags and the dates is to know when you actually pulled that list. So as an example, like I said, if I just put 310 for pulling NODs and next month on 410, I upload absentees, there's a property that's on both lists. Well, if I go to that specific property, I'm gonna see two dates. I'm gonna see 310, I'm gonna see 410. So now I'm gonna be confused and be like, well, wait, what list, was it the absentee list that was on 310 or was it the, so now I gotta go backwards, go back to the filtering and then filter. So like if you're in the specific um, property card, you're gonna see two dates. So I know that was a, a long uh, explanation of why, but again, just to save you the headache, put the name of the list, then the date. So if you're ever comping properties or you're in looking at specific properties, you don't just see the date, you actually see the list and the dates. So you know exactly when that property was updated for that specific list. Because the whole goal of using batch leads is to know, be able to organize multiple lists, but seeing what properties on multiple lists. So you know the motivation of that specific property or homeowner. So again, for tag description, you can put a description if you need help clarifying that. Um, for this, I'm not going to show it. Of course, then we got opt out all addresses and records. Um, I'll obviously, leave it no because I'm not using this to opt out. Like I said, you can opt out in bulk. So let's say I had a list of 10 properties or homeowners that asked to be opted out of the marketing. Then when I go through this process of importing, I would actually click yes. And then the system would automatically filter, find those properties, whatever list they're on, and then stick them in my opt out list and then take, totally take them out of whatever list they're in. And then we'll go ahead, hit submit. Boom, now it's kind of showing me my report section. 
So that I guess this is a good time to kind of show the reports. This, I like the import log because then I, I can just come in here and see like, hey, if I a teammate pulled a list from prop stream and I was, and I'm going to be the one um, exporting the list out to do an RVM campaign. Well, I can come in here, go to my reports section right here, my import logs, and just see if he updated today the NOD list for me. And I can see how many records has been completed, how many were actually imported, and of course, how many were not imported and if there's a fail reason. And then I can even export the list again too if I want to save it somewhere else or if it's for a client and I need to put this list in a Google Drive or anywhere else. So that's how you would import your list. Um, and I'm not gonna go over any of the reports. I'll probably do that in another video. So let's see, I'll show you one more thing. Let's say you want, like I said, let's say you want to add another tag to this. You'll just come to filters, go to filter. I can click on list, NOD, and then tags included this tag and then apply filters. And then what I can do is select all, come over here to action, click on action, tags, add tag. And then this is where I can add more tags to that list that I just imported. So quick tip if you need more, add more tags. But yep, that is how you import a list of properties. And I will see you in the next video. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you got any value or you learned something new, go ahead and do me a favor and hit that like button. And then also there should be a subscribe button that pops up right here. You'll definitely want to hit that button too, because every single week we're always releasing new educational content, tutorials, um, up-to-date stuff to teach you more about real estate investing strategies, marketing, tech tools, softwares, integrations, and all that great stuff to help you scale your business. And then also there should be a couple more videos right here that you should definitely watch. I mean, they're already here. You might as well watch them. If you're, if you're in a playlist of ours, playlist right there, next video right there, definitely should check out more content that we have. And if you want to, you know, do a quick shout out or ask us a question, hit it in the comment section. We're always responding and replying to everybody. So see you in the next video.